Okay, Beshem Hashem Nasem Nasiyach. Today's uh, class is regarding to uh, Lashon Hara. Why Lashon Hara standard deserves such a great punishment? So in order to know this and to understand this, uh, we're going to really go into um, the history of uh, standard Lashon Hara. Uh, when was the best, first time that this Chet, this Sen, this sin was, uh, uh, was committed. Uh, there is a basic rule in the Torah, whenever you wanna uh, know something, you should look into the source, the first source in the Torah, and that, uh, uh, that explains to you the source of the Chet or the Mitzvah. So we're going to really uh, get to the bottom of Lashon uh, stand there, and uh, by knowing it, how, uh, destructive this head is is going to help us to refrain from it and to protect ourselves so uh, the first time that uh, this scene the head of Lashon Hara standard is uh, brought in the in the in the Torah Shabal, uh, Shabich Tab is uh, it's when a snake a Nachash is uh, trying to persuade Hava to eat from the forbidden fruit. As we know, Hashem uh, uh, created uh, Adam and Hava and put them in the Gan Eden. And in the Gan Eden, they had a misvah to eat from uh, whatever they wanted, uh, uh, with the exception of uh, uh, Es Hadad. So uh, Es Hadad was forbidden uh, to be eaten. And Nachash, uh, the snake that we uh, refer to was a different being back then. It was very similar to uh, to Adam in some form, and uh, it was the uh, king among all the animals. Snake. So a snake was jealous of Adam Harishon, and a snake wanted uh, to, in a way, uh, marry with Haba in whatever understanding that is. Uh, he wanted to acquire Hava, Hava. So uh, he came up with this uh, idea that uh, I'm going to uh, cause uh, Hava to sin, and this way Adam Harishon will be punished, and I can acquire Hava. So uh, he came to Hava and he told Hava, you know. Uh, God, uh, God told you that uh, the second uh, um, you touch this fruit, you will be punished. Something like that. Uh, in fact, that was a big Lashon Hara. That was the first Lashon Hara ever. Hashem didn't say such a thing. Hashem said, do not eat from this fruit. So Hava, in a way, explained it to, uh, I mean, uh, Nachash, in a way, explained it to Hava as not a problem. And according to the Midrash, uh, the Nachash came and pushed Hava throughout the Esadat and then told Hava, look, you just touched it and nothing happened to you. If anything, if you eat from this fruit, right, you're going to have unbelievable knowledge that God, Hashem, doesn't want you to acquire it. And Hashem doesn't want you to become a uh, knowledgeable with that knowledge so why don't you go ahead and eat from it and you will even become greater and if you become greater then uh, you're gonna you're gonna be even more uh, blessed so Hava uh, listened to this Lashon Hara and she ate from the forbidden fruit and uh, once she had it then she, she was able to understand between good and bad. That was the influence of uh, es, uh, es Hadad, the forbidden true fruit, that it was the da'at of the scene. It was the knowledge of the scene. So the whole essence of Hawa in a way changed. At that point, she was able to understand that there is a uh, Gashmiot, there is physical aspects to life. Before that, it was uh, 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 only Ruchniot. And uh, that is why uh, uh, she, she came to 
uh, seduce Adam Harishon uh, that he should also eat from this es hadat. Right? In a way, uh, she she became worried that uh, now uh, Adam is going to uh, you know be greater than me in some aspect. Let me let me bring him into the same uh, thing that I got myself into. So then she went ahead and she also said the Lashon Hara to the, Hava, to the Adam Arishon. Uh, she said the same thing. Look, uh, Hashem told us not to eat from uh, uh, this fruit, right? But I ate from it, I touched from it, right? And nothing happened to me. So it is all okay, this is all all right, right? Uh, go ahead and have it. So then, uh, welcome to the chat. Welcome. All right. uh, you guys are muted. Oh, Amujan, nice to see you. Okay, great, great. It's muted. I can't hear. Uh, there are more people. There are more people on the chat. So call me later. Okay. So then, um, yeah, we're talking about uh, slander, lashon hara, for all those who are joining, and uh, so. Uh, Hava caused the uh, Adam Ayushon to do the same scene, right? right? To do the same scene. And uh, this was all because of one Lashon Hara that Nachai said. And imagine what a destruction this Lashon Hara brought to the whole humanity, to mankind, and to the whole world. Hashem changed the whole essence of the world, right? Uh, Hashem even changed Adam and Hava in a form that now they realized that they were not dressed, right? that they were uh, naked, and they had to go and dress up because they got the Yesehara. They got the evil inclination. And that's why Nakash is also known, uh, the snake is also known as uh, Satan, and as, uh, also is known as uh, Malach Hamavet, the same angel that uh, brings some uh, uh, a person to his uh, death uh, uh, with, uh, with the Shekhita that does and takes away the Neshama. So this was the first time that uh, Lashon Hara was said, the standard was done, and the scene of the standard still continues, and the effects of it, unfortunately, is still continuing. So in Zohar Agadosh, uh, the Parashat Tazriya and Mesorah, uh, more in uh, Parashat Mesorah talks about this uh, standard, um, uh, uh, the standard and, um, and the effect of it. You know, in the older days, when somebody would speak Lashon Hara, he would get Sarat. Sarat was a spiritual sickness. The Zohar HaGadosh tells us that no Goim would get it, no Gentiles. Why? Because Lashon Hara right, was the sin that caused the Sarat and Hashem uh, had rachamim, had mercy that the person who de committed that sin should come to repent, to do teshuvah. So Hashem would send this spiritual sickness that this individual would make teshuvah. And you know, it, it, uh, it is very interesting to know that Harab David Ashir Shalita brings from uh, sources that one, would, uh, one who would get uh, sarat he had to go, according to Gemara and according to the Torah Tenagadusha, had to go and, um, uh, bu, uh, and, and leave alone right? in seclusion, right? The term that we're using uh, these days, that he had to go and uh, uh, be in a, uh, a, a single place. I forgot the English word uh, to uh, put himself in a quarantine, quarantine. Right? For seven days, just like the, the virus that we're dealing with right now. Seven days, and um, Kohen had to come, and Kohen had to come and examine what the problem was. Right? So the Kohen would say uh, that there is a, uh, uh, he, would, he would declare uh, quarantine, yes, exactly, quarantine, and the Kohen would come and would declare that there is a Sarat, and he would say one word, Tameh. And this guy, ha, his life would be changed. He had to live alone. He had to put a mask, 
right? Just like this virus that we're dealing with. He had to cover his mouth, right? He had to leave alone, right? And then um, uh, uh, Cohen had to come after seven days and see if he was getting better, right? Then he would stay another seven days for 14 days that uh, somebody who gets this virus would stay. And this would all be 14 days, just like this virus. So it's very, very similar to uh, what uh, we're going through. Our Chachamim tell us that this might be uh, a biggest chesed that Hashem is giving to us right now. That by staying at homes, we refrain talking with so many people that we used to talk, and therefore we would talk less Lashon Hara, and we would understand uh, you know, the effect uh, of the Lashon Hara, and one word, one word could uh, destroy somebody's life, right? And this way, we would come to measure uh, the words that we say, as the Hafez Chaim tells us, that the words that we say are numbered, they are limited. And once those numbers are over, the once they reach the numbers, then a person would, uh, would go to Hashem, would die, right? So, uh, one needs to really uh, think about talking right, if it's unnecessary. And also, as you know, when a person talks, right, uh, beside the fact that there is, uh, you know, uh, the air that comes out from his mouth, right, and this could uh, be uh, uh, contaminate another person if the person is sick. Uh, so too, if somebody says Lashon Hara, it could m make, uh, uh, you know, such an influence that is uh, irreversible. You know, imagine if somebody has this virus and he goes to the uh, supermarket. Lo aleinu, who knows how many people could get affected by that? So too, if somebody says the shonara, who knows some, how, uh, how many people would be affected by this uh, scene, by this uh, la shonara? You know, there is a famous story that uh, there was once this person who said la shonara, and then he went to a chacham and he told him, you know, chacham. I want to do repent. What should I do? The Chacham told him, okay, I tell you what, you what you need to do. And what he did was very bad. The sin of Lashon standard was very bad. So the Chacham told him, okay, let's go in a high riser, you know, let's go in a building. Let's go to the last uh, uh, highest floor and make sure to bring a pillow with yourselves. The older times uh, pillows, they were made uh, with feather, feather in, inside. Those who are from Iran, they remember, I remember, very comfortable, right? So there are feathers inside this uh, pillow and the rabbi told him, you know, uh, whip up the pillow and then throw it in the air. So the guy says, okay, I do it. He ripped it up, right? Uh, all the feathers come, they fly in the air, here, there. Then rabbi tells him, okay, now go gather all the feathers, right? That came out from this pillow. If you can gather these feathers, then uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, you could uh, resolve, you could uh, solve the problem of the Lashonah and the standards that you set. So this comes to remind us that we need to really be careful about what we say. The standard Lashonah is uh, very destructive. Uh, Zohar HaKadosh talks about it so much, right? That uh, one who says Lashonah, you know, it's, it's equal to all the Chataim, Right, Lashon Hara could cause so many, so much hatred. Right, so much. Uh, uh, you know, in fact, there is this chacham, uh, uh, there is this uh, rab that uh, asks a wonderful question, and this question is brought in the Penimim Al Hatora. That Penimim Al Hatora says this uh, question. Right, uh, how come by all the scenes, we see that Torah is careful not to, uh, not to uh, cause the person to be embarrassed. Uh, it's more private. When a person does the sin, right, Hashem gives the wake up cause much more private than the sin of Lashon Hara. You know, Sarat, when it would come, it would, be, it would come first to the home right, of a person that would leave, would come to the bricks, right? Then if person does repent, good. That's good enough. The coin comes, sees the brick, says, yes, this is Sarat. Repent, 14 days, gone. If the person doesn't make Teshuvah, 
then it comes on the clothing. If it doesn't do teshuva, then it comes on uh, screen, right? So it becomes more severe, but the start is from something that is public. So this is the question that uh, 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 in the parashat uh, Tazriya uh, Chacham asks in the parashat uh, Mesora, right? Uh, the name of the Chacham is, uh, one second, Tazriya Mesora, one second, not in Mesora, in, in uh, uh, Sefer, one second. Yes, here. Harav Zalman Suratskin, Allah wa Shalom, he asks this question. And the answer is because one who says La Shunhara, the Chet is so bad. Uh, no, uh, this is not what Harav Suratskin says, sorry. This is what Harav Nisan Alpert says. He says that one who seeks to reveal another Jew's uh, shortcoming, right? This is so bad that Hashem wants to stop it. You know, when somebody uh, says the Shunhara, he's usually jealous of another person, right? So he goes to him, he tells him, I love you, right? We are, we are very good friends. And on his back, he says so much negative information, right? Um, so much negative information. And Hashem wants to stop this person from continuing putting up a, uh, uh, you know, uh, hypocrite double face. So Hashem makes it publicized that people should know that he is not an honest person. So there is another question over here that is asked, right, uh, by Harav Zalman Sorotskin, Allah wa shalom. So, so according to uh, what we learn in the Torah, the Kohen was the person who was able to render the decision regarding, regarding to the impurity or the purity of the Negaim, of this uh, affliction, the Sarat. So Chazal teach us, our Chachamim teach us, that in the event that the Kohen is not versed, is not knowledgeable in the laws of Negaim, or cannot distinguish between uh, uh, various types of plagues cannot distinguish between sarat or another uh, disease. Then uh, he's uh, then he needs to go to a chacham. So the person who got this sickness, uh, it comes to the coin. Coin doesn't know. Coin goes and get, finds a chacham, and chacham, this knowledgeable rabbi or whoever knows the laws of uh, uh, purity and impurity must come to this person who was afflicted by Sarah. And then Kohen, uh, then that Chacham would see it, and then uh, the Chacham would go back to the Kohen and would say, yes, this is Sarah. And Kohen had to come again and say Tameh, impure. So this Kohen, who didn't have the knowledge of Sarat, the Negaim, our rabbis call him a Shoteh. Shote means a fool. Shote. So the question is, why he is called a shote? Right? Call him Amharis. Call him somebody who is not knowledgeable. Call him Tom. He's a simple person. Right? He didn't learn. He, maybe he learned all the laws, but he didn't learn, learn this one. So why he is called a shote? Shote is such a bad name. Shote means he's a fool. He's crazy. Right, he's, 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 he's not balanced, he's out of his mind, whatever. Why is that? So Harav Zalman Surskin, he uh, offers a profound and practical lesson over here. So he, he tells us that uh, the typical uh, excuse of a Jew not to learn Torah is panasa, livelihood. Uh, many of us have this excuse. So a person comes and says, you know, Hashem, I really want to learn Torah, but what can I do? I have rent to pay. I have mortgage to pay. I have bills to pay. I need to bring food. I, 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 need, to, uh, feed, I need to feed, I need to feed my, uh, my kids, my wife. Right? I, have a, I have a ketubah, and the ketubah says that I need to feed, feed my wife, right? 
I have expenses, Hashem. Sorry, I can't learn Torah. I try to learn in the morning. I try to learn at night. So this is the same excuse that a Kohen could have. A Kohen would come and say, okay, you know, Hashem, I didn't learn Torah because I had to deal with Panasa and I, 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 I had to learn, uh, I had to learn, I had to work and then Right? He is reminded that the Kohen would receive 24 gifts from Israel and Levi altogether. Israel and Levi. Okay? Uh, by the way, we have a Le Levi in a group. Right? Levi also would, get, uh, so would receive uh, a lot of gifts. So a Kohen and a Levi would not... Oh, we have a Kohen too. So uh, one of you guys is Kohen and the other one is Levi. This is unbelievable. So you guys will not have any excuse when Mashiach comes, right? Because you're going to receive a lot of taxes, right? A lot of money for Kohenim, 24 different gifts for Levim less. And this way, right, you could uh, sit and learn Torah without the burden of Panasa, without the livelihood. So this Kohen who didn't learn the laws of Negaim, he had no, no excuse. So if he went and he worked, he made more money, he put it in the saving account, or he learned other things, but he didn't learn the laws of Negaim. He doesn't know how to differentiate between, uh, uh, you know, uh, Negah Sarat or another disease, then he's in a bad shape. He's a shote, he's a fool, because he wasted all his time. He didn't learn Torah. So Harab Isaka Fran Shalita, this past week, right, he, uh, he connected this lesson to uh, what we're going through right now, right? During this pandemic, right? We don't have so much excuse that we can learn Torah. Come on. A lot of us are sitting at home. Those who are employed, right? Hopefully their employers are still paying them and they're sitting at home and they're relaxing. Hopefully they learn Torah, right? There was this... Uh, caricature cartoon that uh, I saw and showed a husband and wife right, standing by the door of their home. And uh, there was a banner above that after the, uh, the virus and they were like chubby and fat and they, they were trying to figure out how to exit from the entry door. Right? Law Lenu, that shouldn't happen to, to any of us. Right? But there is a there is a cheshash over here. There is a problem over here. A person could stay at home and uh, not, uh, not having the burden of livelihood, panasa, he can waste his time other ways. So we need to increase our Torah learning. We need to remember that perhaps Hashem now created this opportunity for us to learn more Torah. Right? If you learn more Torah, Torah comes from the word ora. You get more light. Right? And then you enlighten the whole world, right? As, uh, as uh, just uh, what our uh, uh, the scientists and doctors say, that uh, the light, right? Um, the sun, the warmness of sun uh, and the heat can destroy this virus, right? So if we learn Torah, we can uh, send all these Torah and the warmness of the Torah, that Torah is compared to aura, uh, light, and Torah brings warmness. And the warmness of Torah can destroy this virus, can destroy Rashon Hara. If somebody learns Torah, he knows what to say, what not to say. Right? In fact, the, the tongue is the only limb right, of the body, is, the, is one of the strongest um, muscles. I think the first muscle that is the strongest is heart, and the second is the, is the muscle of tongue. Right? But this is the only limb that is in a, uh, uh, you know, that is not a, in a vertical position. All other limbs, you know, nose, uh, uh, eyes, uh, everything is vertical. Heart, everything is vertical. Uh, tongue is horizontal, right? So why is that? So it's unbelievable. Listen to this. And, um, and not only that is horizontal, Hashem puts it in, in, the, in, the, in the mouth, and there are two gates to the mouth. One is the gate of the teeth, 
like this, right? And another is the uh, guard of a uh, uh, gate of limb, uh, limbs. Hmm. So, and when the th when the uh, mouth is shut, is is closed, and the tongue is not being used, is horizontal. It's compared to a dead person, to a dead uh, limb, right? Hashem wants to tell us, uh, consider your tongue as the last tool of communication, right? Limit what you say, right? Imagine that you're opening two gates, two security doors, the, uh, the, uh, the gates of the teeth, tooth, and the gates of limb, right? Imagine that these are two uh, stones of uh, grinding stones. You know, in the older days, right? When they wanted to make a flower, they had these grinding stones and the wheat would be placed uh, uh, between them and it would make them to uh, uh, flower. Imagine that this is the same thing with your tongue. Don't use it unless if this is very necessary. Our rabbis teach us, this is the greatest weapon that we have, the mankind has. The, uh, uh, as our Chachamim teach us, Chaim be Mabed be Yad Lashon. Death, Chaim, life and death is in the hands of Lashon. Uh, the talk that we say, the words we say, you know, uh, so you could make somebody feel uh, alive again with some words of encouragement. Or you could really trash a person, destroy a person's personality with negative words, right? So we need to be very, very aware of this uh, weapon that we have. This is an atomic weapon, right? And, and we need to use it well. So uh, another lesson that we can learn over here is uh, uh, that Zohar HaKadosh tells us, uh, Zohar HaKadosh tells us that um, a person could have been 99% cured from Saran. But if, if there would be 1% left on his body or one break of his home or maybe a short, you know, maybe a short size, you know, a small size of his clothing would it still be white, then he wasn't cured all the way. In order to be cured from Sarat, from Slander, from Lashonara, a person needs to really stay away all the way. And that's why uh, I always recommend to all my friends and the students, right? Baruch Hashem, I learn more by, by learning with you guys. Right? You, uh, you are like a, a rough to me uh, because through this we learn. You ask questions, we learn much better, Baruch Hashem. That we need to focus on learning the Sefer of Shemirat HaLashon, written by Chafiz Chaim. Shemirat HaLashon of Chafiz Chaim, because believe me, we forget about this. Uh, we, we talk Lashon Hara, Unfortunately, and uh, this really uh, it's very destructive. So let's go through Zohar Agadosh and see what uh, other lessons we learn from uh, Zohar Agadosh regarding to this uh, um, um, uh, destructive um, scene of slander. Okay, so Zohar Agadosh tells us. One second. Uh, yes. That Hagodosh Baruch Hu created a person and then Hashem uh, blow, blow into the person his neshama. So when a person speaks the Shunhara, Unfortunately, he causes this Holy Spirit right, to get uh, disconnected from its source, from Hashem. Another thing that we can learn from Nekar Sarat, Amar Avizchar, Lamadnu, Bekam Amar Ragod Nikza Ben Adam. So, the Lashon that over here says, it says that the person who says the, uh, says the Shonara is automatically degraded. 
the lashon that the Torah used is vehaya. Right? Vehaya right, is the lashon of happiness. Vahi is the lashon of sorrow, of, uh, of uh, sadness. Why a person who gets sarat, he's uh, in the Torah it says vehaya, that he should be happy. Why? Yes, so our Rabbanim, our Chachamim teach us that he should be happy that Hashem is giving him a wake up call. That Hashem is reminding him that he, may, he, did, he did a sin, that he can repent. So right now that we are at home and uh, we are we dealing with this virus, we need to remind ourselves that Hashem loves us. Hashem is telling us, right, correct yourself, learn more Torah, speak less Lashon Hara, learn how to control your tongue, Right? And this is the best because we know what's wrong. We know what's wrong. Another thing that we can learn in the Bartek we need to put up a mask. Right? Don't talk right? Don't talk mundane talks in the in the Beta Knesset. Right? Another lesson over here, the Zohar Agodur says, one second. So that Hagolish Baruch who wants to uh, save us from the Chet of Lashon Hara more than other things. Why by Abu Dozara there is no Sarat? Right? Well, Sarat would come for uh, not only Lashon Hara, would come for some other uh, things also. But uh, we don't find Sarat by everything. We, seen it, we find it with Lashon uh, Haras and some other limited sins. Why? Because these are really destructive. Uh, these are very, very destructive. And why HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes himself and uh, helps us right, to this spiritual disease? Right? And even Hashem appoints the Kohen. You know, Kohen is the most trusted uh, member of Am Israel. Because in a way, Kohen is representing Hashem right, uh, in the midst of Klal Israel. Kohen did not work. Kohen did Avodah. The whole Yom Vayom, Yom, the Yom Velayla. Right? And therefore, the best cure should come from somebody who is the most connected with Hashem. So Hashem is telling us that uh, fix yourself that you should be connected to me. Right? Okay, let's go further here. Well, And Kohen represents uh, uh, Hashem's uh, the Fua here in this physical world, and if Hashem say, if Kohen says Tame, the person is Tame in the uh, spiritual world in Olam Abba. The second that Kohen says Tahor, right, with one word, again we see the uh, uh, severity and the Koach of what one word could do. The power of one word is so much, right, that when the Kohen says Tahor, is good, is all good. Right, he can, he can come out from the quarantine, he can do me a business, right? Everything as usual. So, this uh, nega was nega lavan adom dom, this was white and reddish. So, Zohar Agadosh talks about reddish, right? that Esau was red, also the half deal. David Hamelech was red, but there is a, a, there was a big difference between those two red, right? Um, Esau was completely red, but uh, but David Hamelech uh, had some sort of a, a maybe a lighter red. So this comes to refer to us. Right? Uh, there is a lesson right here that. Uh, a person needs to always uh, have uh, his physical uh, outlook 
in a way that is pleasant to Hashem. Right? We see a similarity between Esav and David Hamelech. If I understand this Zohar, Zohar Agadosh correctly, coming to tell us, right? Just because you are Lavan, you you got this uh, Lavan Adam Dom. Don't fool yourself. Don't say no. I'm fine. Right? I'm fine. There's not a problem. No. Ha be realistic. Don't fool yourself. Go seek advice. Go to a Kohen. Go to a Chacham. Go to a mentor. Talk about what is bothering you. Talk about the message that Hashem is sending to you. You know, unfortunately, in uh, the generation that we're living, people have ga'ava. They are they have uh, they are, they have haughtiness, right? Uh, they feel uh, they don't they don't feel okay when they talk about their private life. They don't feel okay if they wanna ask advice from a mentor, from a rabbi, from somebody who can guide them in life. Somebody who has experience. This is the worst mistake ever. This is uh, so bad that Pira uh, Botes uh, does that make for yourself a rabbi. What is the meaning of make for yourself a rabbi? This means that you need to go to a, uh, to a uh, rabbi and talk about your, uh, uh, for, for your uh, points of weakness and your uh, points of strength. That a mentor, a rabbi who is trusted, Right? could guide you in life. And if you do that, Ashrecha. Right? I personally, in my life, I had the most success because I, I've been in touch with my rabbis. You know, for one thing, you know, one rabbi is, uh, is perhaps proficient, is professional. Right? For another area, another rabbi, but anyhow, if you're not sure, if you, can, if you cannot have the uh, because you don't understand it fully or you cannot relate it to your life don't live in a state of doubt right don't live in a state of you don't know this is sarat and you don't know or, or you know this is sarat or you don't know how to deal with it go to the Kohen go to the Chacham go to the representatives of Hashem and seek help right many times a person thinks uh, very positively about himself. He's, he thinks, you know, he is the most hacham, he's the most humble, right? He's all, he's all right. But Nega uh, Sarah tells us that even if you know the laws of Sarat, the Negaim, uh, what is Sarat or not, that's not good enough. You need to go to a third party. You need to go to a Kohen, and if the Kohen doesn't know, you need to go to a hacham, a knowledgeable person, for them to guide you. So this is, I, to me, I think this is the biggest lesson of Sarat, right? Sarat is one problem that we have in life. I right? imagine how many more problems a person could have and he doesn't even know. So may Hashem help us that we learn uh, uh, from Sarat to seek advice, uh, to uh, try to, ref uh, to uh, refrain from Lashon Hara, from slander, and use Lashon in a positive way. And with Hashem together, we can be Zoha to see the Mashiach Sitrenu Bimhara Biamenu. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. With that Hashem, we learn in more classes soon. Baruch Adonai Leonam. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bye bye.